In this brief video, we're going to cover possible symptoms and signs of cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is a cancer that's found anywhere in the cervix, which is the opening between the vagina and the womb. You may also call the womb the uterus. The cervix is part of the reproductive system and it's sometimes called the neck of the womb. Now, nearly all cervical cancers are caused by infections from certain types of human papillomavirus. Now, you may also have heard human papillomavirus referred to as HPV and it's mainly the 16 and 18 subtypes that cause it, but other strains can also be responsible. Now, the two commonest types of cervical cancer are squamous cell carcinomas and adenocarcinomas, and the peak incidence of cervical cancer happening is in women between 30 and 34 years old in the UK. If you do have any of the following symptoms or signs, you should see your doctor. So number one is persistent, unexplained abnormal vaginal bleeding, intermenstrual bleeding, so that means bleeding in between your periods, or bleeding after sex, which is not secondary to infection or other causes. The second thing to be aware of, and speak to your doctor about if you develop it, is unexplained persistent vaginal discharge, which might be bloodstained, which isn't secondary to infection or other causes of vaginal discharge, which aren't normal for you. The third sign is if you experience pain during sex, especially in the genital region. And number four is if you've been through the menopause, but then you experience bleeding. This is known as postmenopausal bleeding. Sometimes if you're taking HRT or hormone replacement therapy, some bleeding might be normal. But in any case, it's best to speak to your doctor if you do develop postmenopausal bleeding. The fifth one to be aware of is an abnormal appearance of the cervix on examination. However, your health professional should be able to recognize this when you do have a cervical exam. Now it's important to remember that these symptoms are common and they can be caused by other different conditions. Having them doesn't definitely mean you have cervical cancer, but it's important to get them checked by your doctor. That's because if they're caused by cancer, finding it early means treatment is much more likely to be successful. Now if you do have these symptoms, you should go and see your doctor, who will most likely need to examine you. Now, please don't be embarrassed about this. It's very common and something that doctors deal with regularly. If you do feel a little bit uncomfortable, which is perfectly understandable, then you can ask for a female doctor when you book the appointment. You're also well within your rights to ask for a chaperone to be present. This will usually be another member of staff who's trained to make sure that the exam is being done properly. Now, it's also worth asking if you wish to have a friend or family member present with you during the exam, if that's something that would also make you feel more comfortable. And remember, you should always feel in control at all times. And if you feel uncomfortable at any point, then just say so. So when you have the exam, you'll be asked to undress from the waist down, usually behind a curtain. And typically, you'll be given a sheet to put over you. The doctor or nurse will wear a set of examination gloves and they may look at the outside of your vagina, which is called the vulva, They'll also feel inside the vagina with two fingers whilst pressing on your tummy, and they may gently put a smooth tube-shaped tool called a speculum into your vagina so that they can see your cervix. Now, this may be slightly uncomfortable, but the doctor or nurse doing the exam will take care to select the right size speculum for you. The doctor or nurse who's carrying out the examination may then take a small sample of cells from your cervix using a soft brush. Again, this shouldn't be painful, but you might find it slightly uncomfortable. The doctor or practice nurse may refer you for more tests or to see the specialist in the hospital if they think you've got a condition that needs to be investigated. This may be an urgent referral, which in the UK is usually done within two weeks if you've got certain symptoms. This doesn't definitely mean you've got cancer, but it is better to ensure that you're being investigated thoroughly. Finally, to try and prevent cervical cancer, there are three things that I would recommend. Firstly, try to make sure that you stay up to date with your cervical smears. Here in the UK, we have a national cervical screening program where women aged between 25 and 64 were invited to screening. People aged 25 to 49 get invitations every three years and those aged 50 to 64 get their invitations every five years. Now, the second way to try and prevent cervical cancer is through participation in the national HPV vaccination program. Here in the UK, girls and boys that are aged between 12 and 13 are offered the HPV vaccine as part of the NHS vaccination programme. And this is a great vaccine because it helps to protect against cancers caused by HPV. These are not only cervical cancers, but also some mouth and throat cancers, 
some cancers of the anal and genital areas, and also some genital warts. Finally, the third top tip to try and prevent cervical cancer is to practice safe sex. This is things such as using condoms and having regular sexual health checkups. This brings us to the end of the video. I do hope you learned something new, and if you did, please remember to like the video, leave me a comment if you've got any questions, or you want to share any of your own experiences which might help other people. And please consider subscribing to the channel for weekly medical education videos if you've not done so already. Please also check out the description box for links to lots of useful resources. And until next time, thanks for watching and bye.